Hello everybody, welcome back to Zombie Zoology. I'm Zombie Zebra and this is the second video in a new series I'm starting called What's It Like? And in this video we're going to be talking about what my headaches are like. Now my headaches are very particular. They come from a couple different causes. So these are not going to be experiences that are going to be 100% congruent with anyone who, you know, even, even if somebody has all of these causes, everybody experiences especially headaches and migraines differently. But I have a Chiari malformation which particularly impacts the way I experience migraines because a lot of times my migraines are triggered by Chiari. And I can't honestly say which of my headache symptoms come from which. Some are from POTS, some are from Chiari, some are from spinal instability. There are lots of different causes for my headaches. So I'm just going to explain what my headaches are like. If you also get headaches and migraines, maybe you can tell me in the comments down below if this is similar to your experience or if it is dissimilar to this experience. Just let me know. Let me know. Maybe it'll help me figure out where all of this stuff comes from. So first when it starts, it always starts in the back of my head. I don't get any sort of like auras like some people get before migraines. So that's one of the reasons I've never really used the term migraine. I tend to use the two kind of interchangeably because I get tension headaches as well as migraines and they all kind of bunch together and headache just feels like a more descriptive term because my head is aching. So they start in the back of my head and it's, if you could imagine slamming back against like maybe not concrete but like a really firm foam. If your head were to slam back against that, could you imagine what it would feel like for your brain to hit your skull? Like if your skull was a little too big for your brain and your brain just like hit it on impact? That's kind of what, what it feels like in the back of my head when Chiari starts. There is this kind of throbbing no, it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like I'm actively being thrown. It, it just feels like the aftermath of being thrown kind of against the floor, I guess. And it also kind of creeps down into my neck. I get some bad muscle spasms, kind of around uh, C2, C1. Uh, that's also my surgery site, C2 to T2, so that's probably related somehow. But a C1 is somewhat unstable, so that also does not help. Having a, a, a non-stable C1 and a Chiari malformation is an interesting combination, which is probably where this comes from. So they start back here, always on the right side. And they eventually creep up over the right side of my head. And when I know they're getting worse, it's because they're sitting right up top of my head. And then it kind of starts to feel like like someone shook me really hard and made my brain hit really hard up the top of my skull. I don't know how else to explain it like that. It feels like I am must be bleeding from the inside. It is so bad. And then eventually it creeps over into my eyebrow. And when it's gotten into my eyebrow, that's when it's oh, that's when it's there. It, it, there's this blood vessel right under my eyebrow. Oh, it's so bad once it sits in my eyebrow and it's just pulling from all the way from the back of my head. And you still have the throbbing in the back of your head from the Chiari, but then there's also this tension because it, this part of it is a tension headache that is just pulling the whole membrane around your skull backwards. It's like when you have your hair in a really tight ponytail and you pull it really tight and you feel your hair follicles pulling back on your head. It's like that, but on the inside. It's under the surface and you can't touch it. You can't, sometimes when you have a bruise or a cut, you can put pressure on it and you can touch it and it'll go away for a second. It will change, give you some relief. I can't touch it. I can't touch where it hurts. It's too deep in my head. The only place it hurts that I can touch is right on my eyebrow. Everywhere else is too deep. They really get to me. I get really sensitive to light and sound. I kind of have to lock myself in a dark room. I tend to throw up from the pain. They really just seem like a big conglomeration of a bunch of different kinds of headaches, but it is absolute hell. I just spent three days with one of these headaches. I will go to bed with it and I will wake up with it. They can last anywhere from six hours to three days. I have lost 
so much of my life to sitting in the dark, literally just counting to 10 over and over again, waiting for it to pass. When I first saw The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, and Kimmy Schmidt talked about how a human being can stand anything for 10 seconds at a time, uh, it felt like somebody said my life motto out loud for the first time. I was just like, yes, that is what I do. You just have to sit there and count over and over again because, you know, nothing's actively killing you, but it sure feels like it. I can never eat when I have these headaches. If I do eat anything, I'll lose it, typically, except ice cream or anything frozen. I crave sugar and frozen foods. So not, not as in like frozen foods you heat up, as in like slushies, like anything frozen and sweet. Oh my goodness, bring it to me when I have a migraine and I will love you forever. I don't know why, I don't know what it is about sugar and what it is about cold things. Cold things I think have something to do with causing the, uh, the blood vessels in your head to get smaller or to open up. I honestly don't remember which one giving yourself a brain freeze does, but brain freezes tend to cause people headaches and they get rid of mine, so I'm not really sure what that's about. If you know, let me know down below. It really does just feel like a struggle to survive. When I am doing those migraines, it is me doing what I have to do to hold on to my grasp of reality. And then that sounds bad and it probably sounds like I'm being overdramatic, but it feels like someone's driving an ice pick through my eyebrow. And it feels like someone has thrown me against the floor and beaten me. <laughs> and it is miserable. And pain is the one thing on earth we can't share. I can't make you feel my pain. Even if I tried, even if I beat you up, it still wouldn't be the same pain. It'd be your own pain. So I really, this is the only way I can try to get you to empathize or sympathize with my pain. So. If you can empathize, because you've experienced this before, I am so sorry. I'm, I'm really so sorry, and you are so strong. And if you can't empathize because you've never experienced this before, there are some people out there dealing with some really intense pain. And I think the least you can do for them is try to understand them. So until next time, hoard those spoons, guys.